If the psychological thriller The Night House was an actual residence, it'd be described as such on Zillow. There's a solid enough foundation, intricate architectural designs, excellent decor that's subtly familiar yet effective, but somebody frustratingly forgot to put on a roof. With spooky atmosphere and a great performance from Rebecca Hall, Night House, Half out of four, rated R, in theaters Friday, is an unnerving haunted house ghost story that juggles the occult with affairs of the heart. As creative as it is, the film tries way too hard to be a more mainstream version of those crazy, metaphor-laden indie art horror pieces, Midsummer, The Witch, fumbling many of the most interesting themes and essential reveals by the head-scratching finale. Directed by David Bruckner, The Ritual, the movie opens with high school teacher Beth, Hall, returning to her isolated lake house after a funeral for her husband Owen, Evan Joni Gale. Though she's trying to keep it together, with a lot of alcohol involved, the avalanche of tragedy, his sudden suicide, his cryptic last note plus now living alone in the home he built for her, is taking its toll. She was always the one who fought bouts of depression, with Owen acting as a grounding force, so Beth's feeling quite unmoored. From The Shining to the Birds, 25 films to watch before you die 5 5e. As if her emotional state wasn't shaky enough. Beth begins to hear creaks in the house and noises outside, which gives way to nightmarish visions of bloody footprints, a house across the lake that mirrors her own, doppelgangers and dark shadowy figures. Amidst being terrorized, Beth begins to dig into Owen's stuff and discovers a treasure trove of growing weirdness, among them, reverse floor plans for their house, a clay statue of a naked woman's body with an array of pins sticking out and Owen's iPhone with pictures of Beth that she doesn't recognize and seems strangely off. The mystery that unfolds is essentially a wide-ranging one-woman show for Hall, though Beth does have allies in best friend Claire, Sari Goldberg, and enigmatic neighbor Mel, Vondi Curtis Hall. Beth is weirded out by the fact that she thinks there's possibly a supernatural presence around her, but she's also a volatile character with a hair trigger. Hall brings almost an angry swagger to Beth at times where her determination to find out various secrets and truths about her husband overcomes the fear of the unknown. While not quite up the level of last year's The Invisible Man, Night House does well in keeping the audience constantly on the lookout for something creepy in every scene, and it's much better at the whole there's something seriously wrong with this place vibe than the 2020 Kevin Bacon Fright Fest you should have left, thanks to some splendid production design, Beth's Lake House manages to be both amazing and disconcerting. The score and cinematography are both aces at ratcheting up the building tension, not to mention some well-timed and very disturbing visuals when you least expect them. It's the storytelling where Nighthouse falters the most. Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski's screenplay gives Beth an essential piece of backstory that disappointingly doesn't live up to its potential. The film is better at looking at marriage, from the sacrifices people make to how much one really knows about their spouse, in chilling fashion, though even that gets shoved aside for some existential dread. Given the chilling mood Bruckner strikes and dark corners he unearths, horror fans will want to spend some time in this night house even if it's not worth a long-term investment.